Welcome to the Man of Recaps. This is the Man in the High Castle, season four, the final season. At the end of season three, Juliana Crane was a prisoner, but oh, she's meditating, and boom, travels to an alternate reality. And good news, she made it to one where the Nazis did not conquer America. And guess what good Samaritan happens to find her? Non-Nazi John Smith. There's a little bit of a time jump. Juliana settled into a new life here. She's even got a boyfriend. Who's that? Oh, actually, it's not Joe Blake. It's just a random dude. I was 100% sure that after Juliana killed Nazi Joe Blake last season, she was going to meet him in alternate Earth where he's a good Joe Blake and they were going to get together, but I guess not. Speaking of good characters not returning, Trade Minister Tagomi has been assassinated. Yeah, the Crown Princess of Japan was visiting town when there was an attempt on her life and Tagomi's the one that got hit. All the evidence points to a member of the Black Communist Rebellion, but Chief Inspector Takeshi Kido knows this was too easy. His commanding officer tells him to drop it, so it was obviously an inside job, and Kido basically tricks this guy into admitting it. Now, what is the Black Communist Rebellion? Well, it's exactly what it sounds like. One of their leaders is this woman, Mallory, and they're planning an attack when a bunch of Japanese bigwigs will be at an art auction hosted by none other than Robert Childen. His antique business is doing really well these days. He's even got himself a cute Japanese assistant slash girlfriend. So the beast CR reaches out to the regular resistance, led these days by our Irish friend Wyatt Price. They pose as caterers and have to test all the food for poison, but they don't check inside the pig where they've hidden a bunch of guns. So the auction's going well till they come out blasting, and it's a huge success. They take out a bunch of Japanese generals. Now Nazi John Smith is burning all the High Castle films. In fact, they've given the man in the High Castle his own Twilight Zone type show. This discredits any of the real films, makes it look like just a publicity stunt for a new show. Of course, the the only reason he's doing it is because they've got him and his wife prisoner. The Nazis have basically perfected their Stranger Things type dimensional portal. They've been sending spy teams through collecting intelligence and have now basically mapped out the multiverse with intentions to conquer it all. John Smith has a personal interest in the closest world where his son Thomas is still alive and well. But wait a second, who's that in the background? It's Juliana Crane. Yeah, she and the Smiths are friends in that world. So Nazi John sends an assassin there to kill her, but good John Smith saves her and oh, the assassin kills him. Guy has to report that awkward news to his boss, but this is good for John Smith. Remember, you can only travel if your doppelganger in that world is dead, so John Smith's going to America. John Smith steps right into his doppelganger's happy life there, where his wife still loves him, and his son Thomas is still alive. He hugs him for a super awkwardly long time. It's like, Dad, I see you every day. Things are awkward, though, when his best friend comes over. It gives John panic flashbacks to the end of his World War II when the Nazis occupied America. The Nazis were offering amnesty to any American soldiers that joined them. John Smith had his wife and newborn son to think about, so he's like, yeah, I gotta do it. Unfortunately, though, the offer did not apply to Jews. So later, John did nothing as his best friend was carted away to be killed, and it was a scarring moment. In this world, though, Vietnam's starting up and Thomas wants to join the Marines. Good John Smith might have said the right things to talk him out of it, but Nazi John Smith tries to talk him out of it, but for all the wrong reasons, so Thomas gets mad and enlists right then and there. So Thomas goes off to die for his country, just like his Thomas in Nazi world. Now, after the art auction, attack, they took Robert Childen hostage. He talks his way out of being killed once again and offers to use his contacts to set up a meeting for peace talks. The Japanese command has a complicated situation this season. Basically, the crown princess and some of her friends are thinking about pulling out of America because they can't really hold it, but some of the generals are not going to let that happen. The peace talks go well until, oh, the black leader's assassinated. Yeah, the Kempe Tai tailed him and the good general's under arrest. For meeting with terrorists, they charge him with treason, which Inspector Kido's okay with, but when they add on conspiring to assassinate Trade Minister Tagomi, Kido won't let that stand. He makes a last minute decision to call off the execution and arrest the real general who did it. Juliana Crane in Good Earth realizes she'll never be safe while the Nazis still control the other one. So she meditates herself back over there and quickly rejoins the resistance. Now remember John Smith's wife Helen left him at the end of last season. She and the girls have been living in the neutral zone with her brother, but John Smith's like, hey, it's time to come home. Her time away though has made Helen realize the Nazis are super evil. One day Himmler comes for dinner. He survived his assassination attempt. He's brought with him a hot new Obergruppen Fuhrer who it's made very clear will be John's replacement if he and his family don't get their act together. So Helen's got to keep up appearances as the perfect Nazi wife. Their youngest daughter is totally indoctrinated by the party, but her teenage daughter spending a year in the neutral zone has made her realize all this Nazi stuff is crazy. 
She talks to her friend about how her mom's just faking it, and the resistance was listening. Juliana realizes getting to Helen is the best way to get to John Smith. She approaches Helen secretly, trying to get her to help the resistance take down John. Helen's got a new handler now, though, who's not letting her out of her sight. Wyatt's disguised as a janitor. They have a big knife fight, and Juliana's got to choke her out. Helen sees this and is like, no thank you, no resistance for me. Meanwhile, the Black Communist Rebellion's in disarray with their leader dead, but Mallory steps up and wants to plan a new attack on the oil pipeline. So boom, it's a series of coordinated attacks all up and down the California coast. And after that, they have to admit they just can't hold California anymore. The Japanese are pulling out. Sheldon asks his Japanese girlfriend to marry him and they're trying to go to Japan, but they won't let him through. He's too white. He goes to see the head of the Yakuza who could definitely get him over there. But just then, Chief Inspector Kido busts in too. We met Kido's son this season who was having PTSD war flashbacks and so racked up a huge opium debt with the Yakuza. Yakuza boss is like, hey, we'll forgive your son's debt if you join up with us. And Inspector Kido's like, yeah, the world's falling apart. Why not? Robert Childen's still there. He's like, um, so can I go? And it's like, yeah, get out of here. But with the Japanese leaving, clearly the Nazis are gonna roll right in there. In Berlin, they have a big war meeting where John Smith is the outcast because he's not German. In fact, they bring in J. Edgar Hoover with a case against John. He's had John and his family under surveillance for a while, and he's got a mountain of evidence of Helen and John saying treasonous things. Himmler's like, John, don't you have anything to say in your defense? John Smith's like, not really, only that I'm gonna gonna strangle you right here. Bold move, John. How are you gonna get away with this, though? Oh, he doesn't have to. <laughs> Looks like this was part of a planned coup he was working with, sexy new Obergruppenfuhrer. These two have agreed to split the Reich in half. He's gonna take Europe, and John Smith's gonna be Fuhrer of America. Helen's like, wow, this is amazing. You're in charge now. We can stop being evil, right? But John's just too far gone down the Nazi path now. She finds out he's planning concentration camps in the Western states. So she calls up Juliana, like, hey, I'll I'll help you take him out. So next time he's taking a train over to the portal, the resistance is gonna blow it up. John and Helen have their final confrontation where she's like, hey, you're not just doing what you have to to survive anymore. You've become the bad guy. It has to stop. I don't know how. And boom, train explosion. Oh, big old crash. John Smith's a badass, so he survives. Helen, though, is not so lucky. Juliana tracks down John Smith, and he's like, you know, I realized I am the bad guy. And oh, he kills himself. Over in California, they're ready to defend themselves against the Nazi invasion. But now with John Smith dead, the next guy in command is like, whoa, call off the attack. He's like, yeah, um, is everyone cool if we just stop being Nazis? Yeah, let's do that. The resistance, meanwhile, has taken over the dimensional portal. Just then, it activates itself, and a bunch of people coming through. Who are these people? Oh, they're just a bunch of randos? It's left super unclear. I think the implication is that like the portal's just all the way open now and people can just go travel to whatever world is the best for them? No one knows, but in any case, that's how Man in the High Castle comes to an end. If you like this recap, hit that subscribe button. I'm bringing you the best recaps of TV and movies, so don't miss out.